Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. Now you may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will be as one. Hello again everyone, I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, and we inspire. And we are continuing our ambitious series on the book, Think and Grow Rich, The Business Bible, the number one selling self-development book, personal development book of all times. We're getting tremendous input from Earl Nightingale, from his video, a condensed version of Think and Grow Rich, as well as uh, my thoughts are being added to that as well. And we are on chapter five, the chapter on imagination. So let's educate, lead, and inspire. And once again, I must give you a disclaimer. This series is not meant to replace you reading the book. People who've read that book dozens of times, every time they read Think and Grow Rich, you get something new from it. This is just to add a little insight and once again, I recommend strongly that you read a chapter and then follow it up with the video and then reread the chapter and get some new insights, get some new thoughts, get something great that you can add to your arsenal that will put you on the road from being a 95 percenter to being a 5 percenter. Once again, chapter 5 is on imagination. Now, imagination is literally the workshop we're in our fashion, we're in our fashion all plans created by man. The impulse, the desire, is given shape, form, and action through the imaginative faculty of the mind. You know, it's been said that man can create anything that he can imagine. Napoleon Hill, his famous quote, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Man's only limitation within reason lies in his development and use of his imagination and subsequent motivation to action. The great leaders of business, industry, finance, and the great artists, musicians, poets, and writers became great because they developed this, the power of self-motivation through their imagination. That's why having a positive mental attitude is such an essential ingredient in the success formula. Now as you go about your daily work, think constantly of ways in which it can be done better, more efficiently. Think of the changes that are inevitable, that are definitely going to be made. Can they be made now? And if you feel limited, remember these words from the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright, and I'm quoting, the human race built most nobly when limitations were greatest and therefore when most was required of imagination in order to build at all. One of the things that prevents people is they say, well, we don't have the resources. You don't need resources. What you need is resourcefulness. You need to have the ability to figure out how to acquire what it is that you're going to need. As you build your future from this point onward, don't concern yourself with limitations, but remember that they may be your best friends since they require imagination if we are to rise above them. The people that make the biggest impact in society, in life, are the ones that use their imagination, take a current status quo, and advance it to the next level by the use of their imagination, of things that they say, you know what, wouldn't it be better if we did this? Would that help us to achieve, to put us to that level? Very simple. Let me give you a quick example of that. You know, years ago, there were video stores on every single corner. Somebody came up with the idea, probably Netflix, came up with the idea that if we make available all of the videos to everybody that they don't have to even get off their couch to access and we do it for a price that is easy for them to pay, 
you don't need stores, you don't need people. What you do is you, all you need for them to have is computer access. Imagination, thinking of ways to do something better than it's currently been done in order to advance the cause of mankind. So once again, when you limitations, problems present you with the challenge of coming up with a solution. And when you do come up with a solution, that is when you can advance both as far as advancing the course of mankind and advancing your own monetary input. Does that make some sense? So you can, it's a win-win situation. But the point is, in order, you know, people tend to avoid, you know, oh, that's not my problem, that's not my issue, that's, you know, that's not what I do. People that are able to solve those issues are then use their imaginations to do it are the ones that profit the most. Keep in mind that the soul without imagination is what an observatory would be without a telescope. You have to be able to see into the future. That's why the people that are the most sought after in all facets of life are the ones that have the best imaginations that can see an issue that say to themselves, okay, how can we solve this issue? Instead of saying, oh, well, I can't do that. That's not something I can do. They say, how can I do that? How can we get this accomplished? So the key thing is not to have resources. The key thing is to have resourcefulness. Does that make sense? You know, in the writing of the book, Think and Grow Rich, what resources did Napoleon Hill have? Well, he wasn't paid money until after Andrew Carnegie contracted him to come up with a success formula, but he did not pay him any money until the end. So, but he did give him, help him with some resources. What resources did he give him? He gave Napoleon Hill access to 500 or so or more people of the day that were very, very successful. Napoleon Hill marched out to these individual people. It took 20 years to write this book. He marched out to these people and he said, tell me, what is it that took you from point A to point B to point C where you reached the ultimate success? What steps did you take? So that was the resource that he had. And what he found was that all of these people, instead of getting different formulas from everybody, pretty much all had exactly the same formula, which is what Napoleon Hill is outlining in this book. So, once again, we are talking about using your imagination to accomplish certain goals and you are not everybody has imagination and we're going to go over in a, another video or so exactly how to use your imagination how to get that ability because we all have that ability to work for us but it's essential that we understand that imagination is the workshop in all plans and all achievements that have been accomplished by man. And because we're never going to end a meeting on a philosophical note, chapter five, imagination, reread it. Let's all get out there and take charge. I'm Eli's dad.